I'm going to help you read a Bible again for the very first time. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? First of all, the churchianity words are dangerous. There are various words in churchianity. And they are not well defined. We need to define our terms first. Yes, this is motivated by the Tina Q message. Motivated towards Precious Patsy and the Baird crew. Important people to me. Noble Eddie, one of the most important spirit-filled people who's inspired and inspiring. The Sedalia crew, the Smiths and Diner people, the Neville's people. Okay, here we go. I'm going to help you read a Bible again for the very first time. Churchianity words are dangerous because they are often not well defined. You need to define terms first. You need to understand the key words that you're using and the descriptions that you're making. Because the leaders and the pastors and the parents and the friends and the people have all been using these terms, but there is not a clarity on some of them. Okay, so number one, we're going to define essential terms. Number two, you're going to hear the stories of what I've learned from six different types of church gatherings that have different strengths, and they ignore the strengths of the other churches. You're going to hear the heavy problems that I faced over the past 30 years. And you're also going to hear an outline, a disciple house set up, a fun way to set up a disciple house. Turn your apartment or home into a, a house. Okay, now, these definitions, these are not Stephen David's ideas. We're going to start out with the Amplified Bible introductory warning. There's a warning in the beginning of the Amplified Bible. A translation is the using of as many words as needed to convey the full true meaning of a certain word. Now, I don't have a good example right here, but... A transliteration is just taking one word in your language to replace a word from another language, even though that word might take five or six or eight words to really describe what it means. So your Bible is a transliteration. It's not a full translation. That means that your Bible is not a safe translation from the original languages. The best way to understand the Bible is to understand the original language and flow with those words. Does that mean that it's bad not to read in the original languages? No, but there are some special things that you can learn. Okay, here we go. Word number one. The word pestuo is mentioned in the beginning of the Amplified Bible. This is not my made-up stuff. The, the translators of the Amplified Bible are saying that it is very, very difficult to take one word in one language and just make an, a single word. Now, this word pestuo... It means become twinsies with. That's actually one of the, the best street style translations of that word. Pestuo. It also means connect to. It means attach to. It means get on the same team as. Become a, com a combined force with become yoked to, like two horses or oxen that are tied together in work. 
pestuo, become twinsies with, connect to, attach to, cleave to, like two parts of a cloven hoof, exactly the same shape stuck together. So pestuo means become parallel in work, existence, and appearance to someone else. It literally means to team up with. Okay, now this word pistuo is translated into English in most Bibles. It is translated in the one word, believe. Now the word believe in English, in a basic translation, the word believe means to, to have a mental agreement with, to come in agreement with a concept, an idea, or a perspective. It means a mental agreement with something. But it does not mean become stuck to, become yoked to, become an imitation of. So the word pistuo is really rich. So that word pistuo is in the most popular churchianity verse in the whole Bible. Whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. Churchianity words are dangerous. Whosoever pistuo him shall have everlasting life. Whosoever become twinsies with him, whosoever connects to him, whosoever becomes yoked to him like two horses or oxen tied together in work, whosoever cleaves to him like two parts of a cloven hoof, whosoever becomes twinsy with him will have everlasting life. That is a very intense statement. This word implies total connectedness total parallel existence, and literally connected with the same work, become yoked to, like two horses or oxen tied together in work. Okay. So these are not my ideas. These are not my ideas. These are serious, interesting concerns that came to me. Now, for example... This word pistuo, it appears in this passage of second of John chapter 2, verse 24. But Jesus did not pistuo commit and trust himself unto them because he knew all men. That's very interesting. It doesn't say. Jesus did not believe them. But what's saying is Jesus did not become twinsies with them. He did not connect to, attach to, become yoked to, cleave to. He did not cleave himself unto them because he knew all men. He knew that men are messed up and wicked. This word pistuo is very, very deep and intense. If I have told you of earthly things and you do not pistuo, you, not, you do not become twinsies with my presentation, how will you connect to what I'm saying if I tell you of heavenly or supernatural things, if you're not even connecting with the material things, how are you going to connect with the supernatural things? This is not just a mental agreement. This is becoming attached to, becoming connected with, becoming yoked to. All right, so we're just starting Go to Blue Letter Bible. Go to John 3.16. 
Scroll down until you see the word Pistuo. Then hit Tools. And hit Concordance. And you can just actually read every place where that word Pistuo is used. And you can start replacing it with the true meaning. Become twinsies with. Become, it actually makes your Bible come alive again for the very first time. Define terms first. Define terms first. I want you to read a Bible. I want you to read a Bible again for the very first time using some of these definitions. I'm going to start hitting with you with a handful of definitions. Here we go.